Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith, and I would not be the filmmaker I am today, barely respected with no hits to my name, were it not for the wonderful world of Disney. We all love Disney, man. Whether it's the movies, the parks, the Marvel movies, what have you, man. Disney is in our DNA. And you know whose DNA it's really in? The Magic Our Way podcast with Kevin, Danny, Eli, and Lee. You want to go Disney hard? Never Disney soft. That's the show for you. Magic Our Way podcast, ladies and gentlemen. It's all the Disney. You looking for a little D or the big D? Magic Our Way's got it for you. Jumbo, everyone. Harambe. And welcome to another edition of the Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. The Magic Our Way podcast. They are truly magical and whatnot. Sante, Sana, everyone. You are listening to the Magic Away podcast from New Orleans, Louisiana, in the United States of America. We are artistic buffs talking about Disney stuff. And this is the show in which every opinion is welcome. MagicAway.com is where you can find us for this episode. In honor of Disneyland Paris's 30th anniversary, we discuss Stephen and Sarah's experience there. And look, this isn't your typical polished, practice, pixie dust and Disney podcast. No, sir. We are not in the parks every day trying to tell you how to best steal a Magic Band Plus. That's right, Kev. We're here to drink, talk Disney, and take a tour through Disneyland Paris. So grab you a French fry and just keep on listening. Are we? My name is Kevin. And I'm Danny. I'm Eli. And Lee. And hey, remember, if you want to go see Disney Paris, book with me. Save some carrots. See? Like money, carrots. Oh. You know? uh-huh. Carrots, yeah. eh? 1920s. Yeah. 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 Carrots. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You see? Yeah. yeah. Are you booking for Bugs Bunny or something? But if he wants to go, <laughs> I'm happy to help him out. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, y'all, we have a special guest. Special guest, who are you? Hey, everyone. We've got Steven. And Sarah. Downs on the grounds. There they are. Welcome back. It's been a while since we've been on the grounds, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, look, enough of our jibber-jabber. Parlons de Disneyland Paris. Uh-huh. How French. French. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> French That's that country name. French. <laughs> well, guys, welcome to the Hub. And for this Hub, we're talking about a trip, a trip report, as it were. And as we mentioned in the intro, we have the Downses, Downs on the Grounds. We have Skipper Steve, and we have Sarah. Sarah's not a skipper? Sometimes I put her a skipper at Sarah, but I, I don't know if you want that name or not. <laughs> You're Skipper Steve. You're like the, you're the one that does all the Disney stuff. Yeah. You're just along for the ride. <laughs> And you're Skipper Steve's personal assistant, right? Yes. Oh, good. Your first mate. Oh, you're his Gilligan. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong Skipper, but yeah, sure. <laughs> so yeah, so they traveled to Disneyland Paris, and I figured this would be a cool time to talk about it since Disneyland Paris is celebrating their 30th anniversary. They had some new stuff opening. They have a pretty killer logo. So I've never been. I know Danny's been to Disneyland Paris. And so uh, I guess more that was probably before these guys took their trip. So I'm looking forward to hearing how their experience went over there. And this was your first time at Disneyland Paris. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, it was our first time at any park outside of the States. So this was the one I wanted to go to first. And uh, we planned on going to more, but we'll see when that happens. Well, cool, man. Take us through it. I'll turn it over to you guys and uh, guide us through this journey. Sure thing, sure yeah. thing. Uh, all right, so just to preface this, this was uh, back, uh, it was a little bit ago, September of 2021, so we'll be talking a little bit of the COVID, uh, I don't even know, regulations they had, it was pretty... Uh, intense. Pretty intense. Uh, that was that definitely framed a, a good chunk of the experience, at least. Um, so, yeah, last year we had the opportunity to go out. Uh, Sarah's work had a like a five-year anniversary gift. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they flew us out to France, and we did a few days in Paris, uh, what, two and a half, three and a half days. Yeah. Then we decided, you know, the the ultimate goal actually was Disneyland Paris, but we figured we can't just go to Disneyland Paris. People would look at us funny. So we did other stuff, too. (laughs) (laughs) We sent you to Paris, and all you did was go to another theme park? 
<laughs> yeah, and then, like the two theme parks that we have like here in our backyard now too. <laughs> kind of to do that. So you you squeezed in the Louvre and the Eiffel Tower just to be. Well, I'm yeah, sorry. actually, we didn't hit the Louvre. We, our hotel was right next to it. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't step in it once. We we walked right past it a whole bunch of times, but it was didn't have enough time. We were, we honestly packed our trip pretty full. So it was really packed. And how, how many days were y'all there? Three and a half days. We did. The Eiffel Tower, um, we did a, the Pantheon, or whatever that thing is called. We did a bunch of museums. I'm a big World War II history buff, so we actually took a day trip out to Normandy. Nice. So that was really cool. Did a lot of museums. I would highly recommend, because, yeah, Disneyland Paris is actually on the outskirts of Paris. It's actually in, like, like a neighborhood, almost. Yeah. And so I actually don't know how people would stay off property, Right. Um, there, just because it's kind of in its own little bubble. We took one of the the trains from right, Paris. Right. They have what, the RER or something like that. In Paris, they've got a few different like uh, subway lines, and one of them is the RER, and that's that has fewer stops in the city, but also goes out to the outskirts. And that's, I think the Disneyland one is the last stop on mm-hmm. those lines. So it's uh, about a 45-minute ride once you hop on there. One way, 45 minutes. Wow. Yeah, that's about what it was for me as well. I mean, we, we took a charter bus when we went. It was about an hour, uh, I want to say. So, yeah, if, if your trip to Disneyland Paris was part of an overall vacation to Europe, which generally it is going to be, I mean, yeah, just bear in mind, you're going to lose about an hour and a half, two hours in, in transit time. Yeah, and that's not even uh, including figuring out what the hell to do once you get there. Yeah. So, I guess before we get off... I, with regards to COVID, like the one of the things that was really bizarre about just being in France in general was, I mean, say what you will, vaccine, non-vaccine, whatever. We had to get the vaccine in order to go and do stuff, mm-hmm. and we had to show our vaccine passport everywhere we went because we were U.S. citizens. All of their citizens have an app that basically just applies a barcode. Like they pull it up on their phone. Each person gets their own like numerical code and that scans it everywhere you go. They scan it. So every time we showed our card, which was two sides also, it apparently was weird. We got weird looks from every single like restaurant and everywhere. So yeah. Did they look at you like, are you sure? Is this real? Did you you make this at home? They questioned it a lot. And then once I'm like, we're from the United States. And they said, oh, okay. Okay. okay." All you said was we're from Florida. Like, Oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I wouldn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, keep in mind, we probably had a, a different perspective, too, because we we were, you know, Florida, we had a lot more f- opportunities. Uh, everything was open here. Every, yeah. I mean, we, were, we didn't shut down very much. The parks, even, were pretty open. You know, I, don't, I think at this point, we didn't have to wear masks in the park, only on rides or something like that. But so it was very different. It was, it was an adjustment, for sure. Stephen, Florida didn't have, like, one of those... QVC code things that you scan like when you get vaccinated because we had that and it, we I, I would yeah like the LA wild for us exactly and you would just show it and they would you at no, every we had uh, we had like a, our cards we got through we did it through Publix and they like put a stamp on one side for when we got our first dose and then flipped it and stamp on the other side and uh, yeah uh, I don't think I've seen any others that are two sided like that so it's kind of weird you get a free sub with that. <laughs> I wish. I think I at made it one point it. when they were trying to coax everyone into getting it, they had some sort of like oh ten dollar gift card or something like that. Yeah. But, yeah. Only on the tenth vaccination, lady, you get that free sub. Right. You got to yeah, stamp it on the side. <laughs> yeah. After your tenth booster. That's right. right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're on the train, and uh, you know we we don't have anywhere to pull all our luggage. The train's like two floors. Uh, we're on the top floor. Where we lug all our stuff. Where we basically take up like a whole like a like a aisle or whatever you know there's just like five seats there three facing one way two facing uh facing those other three and we have all of our stuff kind of crammed in there so i'm uncomfortably sitting i've got like my feet kind of up on the seats because all the luggage is taking like the floor space and at one point we stop and you know it's just train stop that's fine and then the police get on and they walk by and they glare at me like i am about to kill someone or something it was insane i mean like there's no way anyone else could sit with us but they are like they're giving me the death stare and i like sit upright and i put my feet on the floor and i move along two sections down still on the same car and there's this there's this kid this who couldn't have been more than like 16, 16 17 
and he was like lounging. He had his headphones on or whatever. And I don't think he had his mask on. Mm-hmm. That kid was escorted off of the train and cornered and like harassed by like five cops. Oh, we, wow. Dang. Yeah. And we were just like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. And like, I was, I was like, no, there's no way that they like took him off the train and arrested him for not wearing his mask. And there was a person behind us and, uh, and we asked her at some point, I'm like, okay, do you speak English first? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Did, what happened there? She's like, oh, he wasn't wearing his mask. And I'm like, are you that, seriously? Okay. So like, we knew this was the real deal. We really had to <laughs> be careful with oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah. No ticket. No ticket. <laughs> yeah. We lost our masks a few times. Like that my work keeps bringing them back every once in a while. And I'm like, ah, shoot, where did I put those things? But yeah, so it's, it's just interesting. It kind of set us off with a weird vibe for, for going there. That's scary, man. That's that intense. So were they staring at you maybe because you're, you're maybe you're the, Sometimes people wear the mask and the top part is not over the nose. I don't know. Really I didn't adjust the mask. All I did was sit up straight. I don't, I don't so, know. So, I don't know. It was weird, though. It, the cops there were intense, man. They, the, <laughs> except there was one, one time we saw them on roller skates. There was, like, two cops on roller skates, and we got a crack up out of that. <laughs> roller like, skates. They got, like, those big machine guns and stuff, and they were just, like, roller skating around. And, like, <laughs> you, <laughs> oh, wow. That's got to suck if you're the cop. All right, uh, you get the horse, you get the motorcycle, you get the car. Here's some roller <laughs> skates. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got to have the backpack with your extra set of skates on just in case you arrest someone. You're He's like, okay, hold on to my hips. We're going to go now. Right? <laughs> hold on to my hips. Wow. He's got a light these straps on his head. We <laughs> <need to check. laughs> Yeah, he, he just says it. He doesn't have an alarm. He just says it. <laughs> he says yeah. it out loud. It's funny. All right. So, okay. So, you, you narrowly escaped getting arrested for being too leisurely in the in the cart. Yeah. So, finally, we uh, pretty uneventful from there. You know, mm-hmm. we we get there. It's, I, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's the last stop. There might be one other one. Anyways, we get off the train and we're like underground, but it's, uh, we take an elevator up and we get up. And we're like, oh my gosh, we're here. And we walk out and I'm like, what, what, where are we? Like, I can tell it's Disney because it, it looks like, it pro- I, I don't know, I, I can't remember what old downtown Disney looks like over in Disneyland, but it's like the paint's kind of faded, but you, t- you can tell that it's like the Disney, downtown Disney kind of area. They call it Disney Village, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so we're there and we're looking around and I'm like, I'm looking at my picture now. Like, yeah, you can see Tower of Terror, but I'm like, okay, how do I actually get to my hotel here? And I'm looking it up on the map and I'm like, I don't even know. So we kind of meander and we eventually found a cast member and they told us to walk one way. So we did that. And then we were like, okay, we missed something clearly. And so we walk back and they say, no, 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 walk that way and then turn right and then keep walking. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So like the, the train drops us off with quite a walk until you get to where the bus stations are. Buses is where you, get, you would get on and go to your, your resort, obviously. Um, we were staying at the Marvel... New York, New, New York. York hotel thing it was just opened, and uh, you, you we get on the bus, and it's probably going for like two minutes, and then it stops, and we get off. I'm like, okay, well, we could have just walked back. <laughs> but you know, so all this like, time you're hauling your luggage around with you. Yeah, yeah. we're hauling our luggage around. We, we just are walking around like this big bag because we've been up late and up early trying to fill in our last like pair of stuff. So we're just like. We're in our pajamas, basically, like just stumbling around, not speaking French. Like, where do we go? Where do we go? And I'm sure we got some weird looks. Yeah. So you're walking around in your pajamas. That's that's pretty much on point for being an American, too. Like, you're just like, oh, I'm just going to Walmart. Just- yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that was us yeah, was like, like when we first arrived, too. We took a red eye. We got in early, and our hotel wasn't ready. And on a red eye, I'm not going to dress up fancy. I'm going to wear sweats and a T-shirt and, like, a hoodie or something. And so we were just wandering the streets of Paris. We, I feel like we kind of looked homeless. <laughs> 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 well, we kind of were until they opened up our room. Yeah. So now when y'all were outside of Disneyland Paris, did y'all run into any peddlers, uh, shall we say? Like in uh, in regular Paris or like at the resort area? No, at the resort area. I was uh, That was one yeah, of the things like that, that shocked no, me. I didn't say anything like that. You know how like when you go in and around Paris, like if you go to some of the major landmarks, there's these guys outside and they're trying to sell you like little Eiffel Towers, large Eiffel Towers, all these. They were outside when we got to Disneyland Paris. They, I, that was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that where there were actually people on the ground trying to hawk their little trinkets. Yeah, I know. Uh, no, that's... See, so when did you go? It's It was either 2014 or 2015. It went, Whenever... Remember, Eli, remember we went to WrestleMania and the very next day I got... 
uh, boarded the flight. So when it was not the last WrestleMania that was in New Orleans, but the one before that, it was either 2014 or 2015. It was right before Ratatouille was due to open up in Paris. Oh. It was yeah. right before because, I mean, that's why we ultimately didn't end up going to um, uh, their, their studios park because there really wasn't anything over there that looked all that interesting. That's correct. 100% correct. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get there. That was disappointing. And, and by the way, this is before uh, y'all went before Avengers Campus opened up, right? We did, yes. Okay. Yeah, we could see all the construction going. Like, you walk in, and all you can do is, like, probably, like, a 50 50- foot like walk to the right and that's the whole park basically yeah. <laughs> there's nothing to do <laughs> everything was closed down for avengers i think they're doing like what Ar- Ar- not arendelle whatever is that where elsa and anna yeah yeah Arendelle, Arendelle. yeah yeah uh because i think they're doing that too what were you gonna say but danny to your point like l- let's keep in mind the parks were dead like they they closed at 4 p.m like well, we the, the restaurants closed the close the restaurants closed at four i think the parks closed at six so, so, yeah something like that six it, it was early it, it was, was kind of weird it was but. really weird so we were there for three days with the crowd level of, uh, we probably could have done it in two days but obviously we completed everything in two days and did our just the last day was just a full dlp like just just in the disneyland paris park we didn't even touch studios yeah yeah so we got to our hotel yes <laughs> you can talk. You can talk about that. Okay. Remember, remember the whole COVID thing. We're still in the midst of well, midst quote unquote of COVID. Got our passports, and everything. <clears throat> I've never seen this before at a Disney hotel. They have security and X-ray for your bags before you can even go into the hotel. Did like you have TSA. that when you went? No, I did not. But the, then again. I never stayed at a hotel. It was just like a, a, a trip over, and then a, a, it was a day trip. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so they um, we got off of the bus. There was, like, security outside um, of the hotel. We had to show them our vaccine passports. Mm-hmm. Um, they gave us a little wristband, which was completely useless. We will tell you about that later. It was so frustrating. As we figured, okay, we have, we have a wristband, so we don't have to... Great. You know, I was afraid of I, losing my passport at some point, right? We, like, we thought it was like one of those things. You get it checked once, and then you're good for the day. They did give you new wristbands every day. It was a different color, so they know that you're not, like, just using the same one from before. Because, that just, just to frame it, like, over there, you either had to have your vaccine and be registered, or you had to test every other day and have negative Right, so that's why you had, you would have to get a new wristband all the time because mm-hmm. there's a potential that you don't have the vaccine and you just like just destroy your nose uh, every other day. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so so we thought it was it was kind of cool. I'm like, wow, that's nice. I don't have to bring this stupid card around. But okay, we get checked in. We get into our room. The rooms were really nice and it was cool. Like they had like a big mirror with the tv behind it and they had the thing like welcome down's family and and they had to play a little video and the room was themed to black widow i thought the room was really nice that reminds me of our uh oh my gosh where did we go on our honeymoon contemporary contemporary it was a little, a little bit like contemporary yeah. yeah yeah so okay we get there we're a little early we have a dinner reservation for that night um, at the restaurant that's at the hotel and we're like okay why don't we go shopping let's just go see what the stores are like because you know, we have time to kill. We leave our passport or vaccine card in the hotel room because we have our wristbands. They already checked that we have the vaccine thing because we have the wristbands. We walk up to yet another x-ray machine where they will scan your bags and you walk through the, the, the beeper thing, whatever that is. And they're like, okay, where's your card? I'm like, oh no, we have the band. They're like, no, no, you need the card. You need to show us your card. I'm like, are you, I have the band. You gave me the band. And they're like, no, no, no we need to see your card. So we had to carry the card everywhere. It was, so I don't understand why they gave us the band. I don't know what it did for us. No. It didn't do anything, but uh, anyway, it was weird. It, it was wasn't a- magical. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, but their downtown Disney is very small. <laughs> it's very small. Very small. It was, uh, I can't even. I think there were maybe like, like five or six stores. Yeah, yeah, there was not much. It's basically like picture Disney Springs. If you park in the orange garage, and all you have is the stuff that's around Orange Garage, and that's it. Like, oh, wow. Else that is itty bitty. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and when we got there, we, we found one store that was like a kid store that was like, you know, toys and stuff. I'm like, dang, that that's, I was really hoping for some cool stuff. But we eventually found um, a small store that had like the paintings and stuff like that, the stuff that we would be interested in. So, and they had these cool books. I got all of them. Because, oh, nice. Oh, like, 
<laughs> I'm like, why wouldn't I? So they had one. These they're like based on uh, the different rides, and they give some background on them. Uh, so they had one for Space Mountain, which I knew I had to get because it's so unique over there. Phantom Manor, of course. Oh, I yeah, I gotta get that. And then Pirates of the Caribbean, which I thought was an odd one to include since it's like. I didn't think it was that unique, although it is. It it's is pretty different. different. I, it is. I was gonna say, yeah, I, I kind of had it to be a little bit different. At Disneyland Paris, is there a little? Oh different? yeah, it's, okay. it's backwards. I think it's my favorite. That's. Uh, I think it's the best interpretation and the order of like Scene. scenery and storyline. I think it's. I like mm. it the most. But. Yeah, l- let's save it till we get to like to the attraction yeah, yeah. itself. Yeah, but yeah, that's a good discussion. So I love Phantom Manor a lot. As a side note, because before I even wrote on it. Um, because it's the architecture of the building itself is actually based on an old Western building in a town that I grew up really close to. So there's a town near Reno, Nevada called Virginia City that was very big uh, for the mining era. Mm-hmm. And so the Imagineers, I guess, visited Virginia City. They literally it's referenced literally a tiny town that in the middle of building. The <laughs> uh, they say it's the fourth ward school building in Virginia City, Nevada. And I'm like, I, I know that place. I've driven <laughs> past it so many times. And so it was just kind of a cool little connection just early on before I really dove into the Disney stuff too much. Although to know about Phantom Manor, you probably know a little bit. Hopefully it wasn't as beaten up as the, that one is. is I remember, oh, no, it's still in use. Like it's, yeah. it's like a museum now or right. something. Because yeah. I remember that being like a story back then. Uh, not, not back then, but I remember hearing the story that Mark Davis was not happy with the look of Phantom Manor because he's like, Walt would hate it. He always said, make make the outside beautiful. We keep the we take care of the outside. They take care of the ghost, take care of the inside kind of thing. Can we go back to the hotel for a bit? Talk about the hotel? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the hotel was crazy. Like, we were originally planning on staying at the Disneyland Hotel, which if it's a once in a lifetime, like, DLP trip, like, for sure we have to stay there. We booked it. It's closed for renovations, of course. Oh. That's just our luck. Like, every single yeah, time we book right? something, it's closed for renovations <laughs> and we go somewhere else. <laughs> you can have my luck on a Disney trip if you want it. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> no, cool. uh, but no, I wouldn't say that this was any, like, consolation prize, except that, you know, it's, like, not on the park border, you know? Like, that was something that was really cool to me. Even though the, the room we were going to get wasn't looking into the park, Still, the fact that I take an elevator downstairs and then I'm at the park, that's just kind of neat. So it added about a five, ten minute walk to, our, to the park, but it's not that bad. The hotel itself, it was it was really nice. I mean, it was brand new, right? So they, they gave us a uh, like a commemorative like big poster thing, like a, a nice quality one, too, that made me wonder how I'm going to get it home. And uh, I haven't put it up yet, but... And then they gave us like some, some drink tickets, which... It's kind of a funny story with that, but... Um, Can you explain to us exactly what... Because you mentioned this before, and I'm still kind of wrapping my head around this. What does a Black Widow-themed room look like? Yeah. There's just, like, Black Widow art on the wall. That was what was really cool about this hotel, was it's a lot of... It was a lot of custom... Or not custom... But a lot of custom, because they did get a lot of the Marvel. They had, like, custom artwork, mm-hmm. like, big, big, big paintings of different... You know, I'm like, there's a cool Doctor Strange one. There, like, there's a bunch of them. Uh, and then the the room itself, it was a black and white and uh, red. and red sort of, like, theme. The floor is sort of, like, spider webby, which could be Spider-Man or Black Widow, but the uh, the beds themselves had, like, a like, like a small blanket that had that, same, that Black Widow, like, you know... Try hourglass? hourglass. Yeah, yeah, the hourglass yeah. shape. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, there was, like, a picture, like, a like a comic-style Black Widow on one wall, and it had T'Challa on the other. So I, when I was looking at, into it, all I can remember is that they had, like, two different stylized rooms, which Spider-Man and Black Widow. I'm pretty sure there's more, but I, I don't know what they would be. I'm surprised that... Those would be the. I mean, Spider Man makes sense, but like, why not Iron Man, Captain America? Anyways, because they can just double up on the spider webs, and it applies to both a Black Widow and Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, and they only have to buy uh, one carpet. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. One. Cutting costs. So yeah, we we see the. What, what else was at the hotel? So they had a couple of bars. So yeah, we got those drink vouchers, uh, and we were really excited about that because we're like, you know what? Long day. We watched a kid get arrested for not wearing a mask. Let's, uh, <laughs> nice. let's get into our hotel. Have um, a couple of adult beverages. Yeah. and just chill. Yeah. So we went to. So they have two uh, bars there. One is a Doctor Strange sort of. It almost felt more like of a steampunk kind of feel. Yeah. You know? But they uh, they called it the Bleecker Street. Bar. bar or something like that so like you know dr strange i think he lives on like whatever yeah yeah and uh and so we went to the, that one first because that one was that was open that opens earlier closes earlier the other one was called the skyline bar which i have issues with <laughs> uh that opens towards the end of when the dr strange one 
closes around like and, five o'clock. Yeah, and then closes later. At so like 1 so they only ever had one bar running, and I imagine the cast members would just like go into the back and change into their new costume and go man the other one. But whatever, it was fine. So we went in there, and I'm like, you know what? Sounds really good. Some wings, and they had hot wings there. I'm like, sweet, perfect. We're gonna get some adult beverages. I'm gonna get some wings. Amazing. And we're gonna we got our voucher, so this is gonna not cost us anything. So we got our drinks, and I'm pretty sure the drinks were good. I mean they were not like anything Disney to write home about because yeah. I clearly don't remember them that well, but they were pretty good. The wings were literally fried wings with ketchup on them. Oh, yeah. oh that's wrong. <laughs> the French have no sense of like spice or anything. Apparently not. So <laughs> it was like this is not hot wings. Right. At all. I mean, it, it said hot wings, and I like spicy wings. <laughs> In other hot. words, they serve them hot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Instead yeah, of yeah. cold. <laughs> Just to be sure, these are warm. <laughs> Yeah, so that was fine. And uh, so we went, I went to go cash our vouchers, and they say, oh, no, that's for non alcoholic drinks. I'm like, you have to read the teeny, teeny, tiny. Well, oh. what the heck is it? Okay, fine. Oh. But, but whatever. And uh, so then I whip out a Disney gift card that I had. I'm like, okay, well, at least I can pay for this. I'm like, no, no, we, we don't take the American Disney gift cards. I'm like, oh, oh. you know what you want? Well, I have to pay for these drinks, and I have to pay for my ketchup wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I think the wristbands were just to signify that these are Americans. Americans, yes. We can tell them whatever we want, <laughs> and they'll go along. They'll just yeah, these, mock them. Yeah, go mess with these guys. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> so now the, the beverages were they like Doctor Strange theme? Were they bubbling? Were they like mashed hey, bowl? Okay. There was one that would bubble. We didn't get that one. I think we got something that was fairly, fairly something that's like kind of common. Yeah, I mean they they did definitely have like the theme the themed drinks. I, I don't remember them that well, and I don't think we have pictures of the drinks. No, we can talk um, about the other the Skyline Bar though, and our issues with Skyline Bar. Right. Yeah. So I mean, later on in the trip. You know, as we're talking about the hotel, we'll talk about that too. Uh, we brought those vouchers, right? So I'm like, okay, we're going to use these at some point. It's, I'm going to get a free something to drink. Uh, so we went over to the Skyline Bar, which was themed to be as if you were like in a New York skyscraper. And it looked really cool. And like they had this really big wall that was like, imagine like the Space 220 wall, maybe not that big, but like that sort of thing where it's like a big screen that's made to look like you're in like a real place. And then every like five, 10 minutes, you'd have like a Quinjet fly by or Spider-Man would swing by or Iron Man or whatever. You'd have some, some stuff to see. Uh, and it's so cool, except the Skyline Bar is on the first floor, right next to the entrance of the hotel. And I'm scratching my head like, okay, I know it's not a tall building. There's only four stories tall, the hotel rooms. I'm like, why wouldn't you just put this at least at the top of that? Like, <laughs> to walk in on the ground floor to something called the Skyline Bar seemed kind of weird. I almost thought it was going to be kind of like California Grill, how they right. have like that separate elevator that you go up and it's like kind of exclusive and fancy. That's kind of what we imagined. And yeah, no, we just like walked across the lobby. Yeah, like... You walk down a hallway. On your left is the Doctor Strange bar. On your right is the Skyline bar. And I had no complaints with actually like the drink there. It was not alcoholic, but it was tasty. It's some type of slushy green apple. Yeah, like, yeah. They only had like three options. And, you know, it was okay. It was fine. I mean, I can't complain too much because it was free, and this time it was actually free. But uh, I would complain about the placement of it. Like either don't call it Skyline bar because it's a misnomer, or put it somewhere else because you really could probably do that and be fine at least use the hydrolator technology where at least you get in an elevator it shakes a little bit and then you open up on the other side and then you walk right in and make it convincing yeah <laughs> yeah sell me on it a little bit right right yeah so the last little thing that in the hotel was uh we had a di- our dinner reservation so this will close out the first day too so we had our dinner reservation at a vaguely asgard themed restaurant like the food itself was just like a fine dining kind of food thing but like if, if you want to pull oh man i can't remember what it's called but uh like when you walk in the whole place it's like it, one big circle and in the middle it's got this really big chandelier that like hangs Looks. down it's sort of like a bronze color and a bunch of pieces of glass hanging down at various levels to come down to a point like a funnel kind of thing. It looks vaguely like the underside of Asgard, or maybe Asgard flipped over, I don't mm-hmm. know. But that, that was the intention, I think. And they had that motif like in their other areas too, like on the plates. Yeah, like that. Is that it? Yeah. I mean, that's, if you look at that, you can kind of picture Asgard. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Now that yeah. Kind of puts it, okay, yeah, it, it does look like the... The castle before... Um, right, the whole... But not exactly the, the whole story. city of Asgard. Yeah. Oh, there's a better picture of it. Right not there. new Asgard, 
Right, yeah. old Asgard. Old Asgard. Old Asgard. Right. Right. Not the new Asgard. No, no, no. No, no. Yeah, old yeah, Asgard. To be fair, no, no. Clear, yes. It was just fine dining. I thought it was pretty good. The portions there were decent. Yeah. Our package, okay, so I guess just back up a little bit. The package, when you go to Disneyland Paris and you stay on the resort, when you buy your like your hotel rooms and stuff, it's all going to come out at one time. You don't get to pick like, okay, well, I'm going to stay there for five days, but I only want two days of parks for some reason. Uh, right? Like if you're staying at the hotel, you have access to the parks. That's basically how it works. It gives, they also give you, we got a free breakfast and a free one free meal voucher. There's different levels of meals. Kind of like our, and yeah, so our package that we did was a free breakfast and a free sit down meal each day, uh, which is, so, which was nice. So we only paid for one meal every day, and we got some snacks here and there. The dinner there was pretty good. Had really good lasagna. It was definitely welcome after a long day of travel, seeing the kid get arrested, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and just you know we're just kind of worn out at that point. Well, that really happening? scarred y'all. That kid getting arrested, huh? It was just it was weird, man. Like I, it, I don't know. It was it was just don't step out of line, no matter what you yeah, do. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I'm like, holy moly, people live under these like circumstances. I, I couldn't imagine. We'll get to yeah. We had another we had another scary incident later on with trying to come home, but we'll talk yeah, about that right. later. So okay, so finally, just just one little story about the uh, the dinner there because it ultimately was mostly fine and good. I would go there again for sure, um, but it's not like a, oh my god, amazing. Uh, the dessert, you know, the meal comes with a dessert. You got a appetizer, a meal, and dessert. And so we're looking at the menu, and there's probably like four or five things on the menu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sarah orders a tiramisu, and I'm feeling a little bit adventurous, so I ordered this thing that I wasn't 100% sure what it was, but I, for some reason, I would have gone to my grave saying, like, I definitely ordered some kind of cake. And I ordered it, and the the waiter was like, sir, are you sure? You know, this is uh, different than what you think. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna go for it. Let's just see what it is. And so they come out with the desserts. They set down Sarah's first. And it's a four inch by four inch by like two inches big old thing of tiramisu. And I'm like, dang, if that's what Whoa. she got, I can't wait to see what my cake looks like. <laughs> and they put my plate down. And as it passes into my field of view, I see this big, long piece of like, Cho- like a like chocolate um kind of like cut in a curve and i'm like oh wow that's that and my kid cool and i set it down and i'm like hold on wait a second and so i'm looking at this thing and there's that big piece of chocolate that kind of skirts around the edge and then there's like two globs of like and chocolate mousse. mousse and there's some pear inside of the mousse and that's it and there's like this big section of the plate missing my cake i'm like <laughs> What the heck? What? Somebody ate your cake? Like, what? Where's the? Where's my? And there's there's a there's a French couple like at the next table. They are rolling on the floor laughing at me because I'm like, this is not what I thought it was. Where's the cake? What the heck? And and I look at the menu. There was never cake. I don't know why I thought there was cake, but I was like so disappointed that I. I ordered cake, damn it. And is this it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, like, <laughs> oh my god, I'm with you. Yeah, I don't know why. Like I said, I don't know why I thought it, there was cake involved. I that think it's very unappetizing. Right above it said cake, and I had that in my mind. And I saw this one that said chocolate mousse, and I'm like, that seems like pretty good. Uh, no, no. We still make fun of Stephen about this to that this was, day. That it was, was uh, hysterical. And what was it called? It's called. It's called. You get no cake. That's what it was called. <laughs> Let them not eat the cake. The cake was a lie. <laughs> oh yeah. yes, absolutely. I, I got to put this back on the wristband thing again. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Fair> South <enough>. Americans. <laughs> That is. Yeah, that's why it had the A on it. Uh, <laughs> Captain America Shield. Uh, Captain uh, that about wraps it up. They so the hotel the was first cool. Day. They, and they had art everywhere. The oh, the pool was another cool thing. I mean, we went in it once. It was neat because you can go inside, but like the pool also went to the outside. Like you can swim from inside to outside. Oh, fun! Yeah, that's kind of unique about Disneyland. It's like they have a lot of indoor pools because the weather is so crappy. <laughs> you need to have the. the I think. I could be wrong, but I think every uh, hotel has an indoor pool. Yeah, weather was chilly. I wouldn't say it was cold, but it was not. Uh, well, we're used we to it. Hot. Yeah, it wasn't that humid. You know, it was like a kind of a brisk fall kind of thing. September in France. Know. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't too bad. So, so I guess we can move on to first day, mm-hmm. day one. Um, all right. So first day, we split up our days into. Um, we wanted to do Disneyland Paris first. 
but we had a dining reservation in Disney Walt Disney Studios the first day. So we at, decided uh, to park Hoppel around Chez Remy. Uh, around lunchtime. Yeah, we did the the Chez Remy uh, restaurant that's at the Ratatouille ride. And then the next day was flipped. So we did Hollywood Studio or Disney Studios. I don't know why they didn't call it Hollywood Studios there. It's called Walt Disney Studios, which is sort of weird to me. It's basically Hollywood Studios, but it's super tiny. It's supposed to be like MGM Studios, like it, back in the day. Back in the day, yeah. Right, back when they were doing MGM. But uh, yeah, I guess. Oh, right, I guess it would have been that at the time. Yeah. And now, do you have the option of not doing a park hopper when you book this package, or is it just like, hey, this is how it is? It's small, which is included. Just do what you want. From what I recall, it was all just included. It's it, yeah. they just. I, I didn't have the option to do one park, double park, whatever. It was all just. Uh, because uh, I was I was fighting it a little bit. We booked with uh, Roberge, and she was trying to figure all this out. And uh, so I felt kind of bad for like, okay, how does this work? And I just asked her over and over because it was it was so foreign to me. But yeah, it's all just if you're booking to stay on the, ho- the hotel, you get I think it's the number of nights you get that number of days days in the park. Like the first day when we went when we checked in, we could have gone into the parks if we wanted to. Right. Yeah, either that or the last day before we yeah. left, but we didn't have time that time. So, anyways, we get to Disneyland Paris, we walk through the teeny tiny downtown Disney, and that that was a pretty emotional time for me, like walking up to it because like it's the first time I got to see the hotel, like the Disneyland Paris hotel like right on top of the gate, and I'm like this oh my god this is like the thing that i've been like wanting to see forever and it's right there it's like big it's i think it's pink like just yeah. tall and beautiful and i'm like we're actually here this is insane you know like it, it just there there are a lot of moments for me like that especially when we get to phantom manor that was crazy but yeah we you know. made a beeline for phantom manor uh we were on thunder mountain first which steven loves their thunder mountain because it goes underground oh that's cool yeah do you guys know how their thunder mountain works Yes. Okay. So that was exactly where I made a beeline to as well. The minute we got there, it, yes, you board the train at the, at the main station and then you zip underground. And because picture like, so every single time you go to Disney world, you go to Disneyland, you know how they have Tom Sawyer's Island. This is the best use of the concept of Tom Sawyer's Island and that the Island in and of itself in the middle of the water is, and they don't call it the, the, Rivers of America, they call it like the rivers of the far west or something like that. But the island is Big Thunder Mountain. So you go oh, under the water cool. and what? then you end up on the island going in and around. It features the best views. Oh, absolutely. It, it easily is, to me, the best version of Big Thunder Mountain. Hands down. Yeah. Yeah. I got to say, it, in general, I, and Tony Baxter did a lot of the work here and that guy should have done more. Like, th- this park is the Disneyland. Paris Park is something else. Like he said, you know, the the what Disneyland is the happiest place or something like that. Disney World is the most magical, and then this is the most beautiful. Hands down, absolutely hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah, that was I knew how that was gonna work. I know you get in, you go under the river, and then you pop out on the on, island. on the island and, and I think it's even the ride, like the track itself is a little bit different. I think all, all of them are a little bit different. But anyway, so you go down, and then... I just, so, just... If y'all, any of y'all, like, go on this at some point, that last drop is just insane because, like, you dip into this cave, and then it just feels like you are plummeting to the center of the Earth. You go faster and faster and faster, and it's dark. It's not even, like... You don't even have, like, stars, like, in Space Mountain, right? It's just pitch black. And you're zooming down this thing. I could not contain my, like, excitement. I was just, like... Putin and hollering and this whole thing. I'm sure everyone else was like, dude, this is freaking American. <laughs> but man, I love that part so much. And then you just like pop right back up and then you're at the unload area and then you're done. And I'm like, whew, like what a rush. Yeah. But yeah. So we went over there, I think because Phantom Manor did not open when the park opened, no. right? I think they were doing some testing. But Phantom Manor and Big Thunder Mountain there are connected. Yes. So the guy who story owned, wise. Story wise, yeah, the guy who owned phantom manor he like, the railroad Mountain, yeah the, the whole town like he was sort of like the mayor or something like i've read the book i can't remember how it all goes down but it, it's amazing how they like in, integrated everything into the story it's not like haunted mansion has its own story and then you have pirates of the caribbean with its own story. like everything is 
tied together, um, which was really neat. Because like even in Phantom Manor, there's a there's part of it when you're in one of the scenes, you can see Thunder Mountain in the background because you're in the same world as where Thunder Mountain is, which is really cool. And I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this a little bit, but to his point, so the, the story is kind of like there's a guy named uh, Henry Ravenswood Henry or Ravenswood. something like that, and so he comes to this little town. And he gets into mining and they find gold in this mountain that's kind of cursed. And then he builds Phantom Manor for his family. So that is kind of like the whole of Frontierland. I think it's the largest Frontierland in any Disney park is all interconnected by the story. And that is what makes Big Thunder Mountain even better is because the scenery as you're going around. Like, you know, you go around Big Thunder Mountain in Disney World, you're still seeing Splash Mountain. You're still seeing different things that doesn't exactly jive with the story. The scenery, and it really helps put you put you there when you're, when you're riding Big Thunder Mountain in uh, Disneyland Paris. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll tell you another thing about this. I'm, I'm talking about it from somebody who saw it years ago. When Steven and Sarah saw it, they probably, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess they saw it because since then I think it was uh, updated and they do the little blast section like the dynamites running with the... Oh, like, kind of like oh the right. So I believe they even got that going for it too. So that just kind of puts it above and over the top. Right, yeah. yeah they did the, that's right. Because they did that in Disneyland where they had the blast and they projection mapped like the fire effect on top of that, mm-hmm. which I always thought was really cool until it started, you know, crapping out over in Disneyland. And it was working, I think I remember working pretty well yeah. at Disneyland Paris. But yeah, so, so then at Phantom Manor, that half of the story is all about, I can't remember the exact timeline, but Henry Ravenswood, who's like the mayor, has the daughter, Melanie, and he's like uber protective of her. And she had had a number, I, I think they updated the story. So the new version is she had had a number of suitors and he kept killing them all. So like in the stretching room, instead of having like different portraits that kind of stretch out and then it's kind of a funny scene the guys in the quicksand the guy on the tnt or whatever right you have portraits of her and her different suitors and then as the ghost host is telling the story she fades away and it stretches out and shows each of the ways that they were killed which was crazy cool oh my gosh i just get chills i mean i before we like hopped on i listened to the music again i'm like oh my god it's so good and then as like the the lights cut out and stuff you know normally you see the the guy hanging from the rafters well now you have the phantom who's an actual character who is her deceased father who like, who like trapped her into the house after supposed to marry someone so you as you're going through the ride you see her in her wedding gown and you see the phantom like haunting her like he's like yeah behind her like influencing her or literally like capturing her or it's so cool so yeah as as the lights cut out you see him up in in the rafters like looking down at you like laughing evilly and then you go onto the ride and the the parts that made me like well up were walking up to see disneyland pair like the hotel walking up to phantom manor and being like i'm not looking at an internet picture this is like the real life one right here and then i know in disneyland you go down, the elevator takes you down the stretching room, and you kind of walk forward. You see the busts that will follow you as you walk past them. And then as you're getting onto the doom buggies, normally there's like a just sort of a big foggy room. There's nothing to see there. During Halloween and Christmas, you have the big old advent calendar that has all the characters. Here, you have this really pretty big staircase with Melanie standing at the top, and she's looking outside with the storm and everything, and you can hear her like singing. And man, it, I, when I saw that, I'm like, dang, that, it's so cool. Like, it's so much, like, it's totally worth the, the cost of, like, going there if you're a fan. Just having seen that and, like, I don't know, I, I don't know why I focus so much on that one. I'm like, dang, this, like, that kind of means I'm, like, here, you know? So we get on the ride and something that uh, it didn't occur to me until someone had mentioned it in a Facebook, like, comment on a post I had. There's no narration on the ride. You don't have the ghost host telling you this is this and this is this and here's a dance scene and here's blah, 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 right? No narration. It's all orchestrated, like, music with, like, vocals and stuff. And you're going through and you just see scene after scene of what's happening and they do a really good job of, like, visual storytelling trying to get you to figure out who's who and what's going on and why Melanie's doing this and whatever. And um, eventually, like, uh, normally you go through and you encounter the Black Widow Bride, right, in our mansions. And I know that there's some debate about one way or another, but eventually, like, fall out of the mansion you're going backwards and you go into the graveyard in this case 
you encounter the phantom and then you're going backwards and he's like burying you into a grave and you are now like in the underworld with all of these like decaying corpses they're and stuff. gooey it's like, gross they, they a whole other level of like horror like i feel like kids would actually be afraid of this right like <laughs> So, I don't know. I, I don't want to go into too much detail. Sorry if I'm, like, spoiling stuff. But like, No, no. Um, spoil away. Love it. It was... It, it's just so different. Like, again, I've seen this. I've read all the books about it. And, like, I've, I've watched videos and blah, blah, blah. But it's, like, it's something else just to be there. To, like, see it in real life. And, of course, they have the singing busts, which is a little bit odd. It, it sort of doesn't fit with the vibe. But... I think you kind of have to have them. Well, maybe that's what they think. I don't personally think you have to have them, but whatever, they're there. Well, I mean, you don't have the hitchhiking ghosts. I mean, so I would think that would be more iconic than, say, the uh, the singing bus. Uh, you're right, right. Yeah, and the music that they play is not the – it's like – it's probably – a similar like a tempo like it's it's a faster beat of course but it can still fit into the same like music that they're playing throughout the ride but it's not like they're singing along to the same tune that's been playing or anything it just kind of like the music cuts out and you pass them and they're singing and then it cuts back in where you're just listening to regular music and then one last little tidbit i really thought was cool is so like it's in french right it's not, like the the ghost host does speak in the stretching room and it's half in english half in french and i don't know if each line is like he's like if he says something in english and he says the same thing in french and then the next step or if it's like one thing in english and the next phrase in french and then you know you know what i mean like i don't know if they stagger it like that or what but the only other time you hear like someone talking is when you encounter the mayor as you're passing him in the underworld he's tipping his hat to you and as he tips his hat to you, his head comes off with the hat. Which, yeah. <laughs> and that's the voice of our ghost host. You got the Paul Freeze voice in that guy saying, welcome, foolish mortals. And I, I think they, they cut a couple of the other lines to like make it fit what that scenario is. But yeah, so that's I think that's overall like the actual ride itself. It's just it's so cool. Like the, the different kind of story that they were able to tell there. Like here, it's just sort of a mishmash of stuff and special effects which is great i love the haunted mansion here but over there you're actually getting a story so well okay so this is where our experiences diverge a lot because when i saw phantom manor when we went a lot of what he's saying that 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 beautiful foyer with the uh with the bride looking out that did not exist the four portraits where the husband disappears and you see how these four suitors meet their demise that didn't exist. The narration that was done kind of in French and kind of, and, and in English as well. Uh, it, that was Vincent Price, by the way, who did the narration. That did not exist. Everything was in French. The really good visual storytelling with the Phantom kind of looming over and making it very obvious that the Phantom was her father, again, didn't exist. Like if you go through the portrait gallery, the portrait gallery was really, really well done. I'm sorry, really is well done. Not in the past it wasn't. It was the same pictures that you always got. These pictures were a little bit more updated, and you actually see a picture of the father, and then the, the light and flashes, and he's the phantom, and it gives it away right there. When you used to see it, you had no idea what the story was, and if you didn't speak French, you really were lost. And so Phantom Manor ended up kind of being a disappointment to me. Like I was like, I have no idea what I just saw. I have no idea how this all fits. I have no idea what's going on. I'm aware that there's an effort at telling the story, but I... I'm just not getting any of it. The visuals and the animatronics and the effects weren't really all that great or next level. But what they've done since then, interspersing Vincent Price's vo- a voice in there, they do it with Mam Leota as well. I mean, I-, I still don't understand how you go through a crypt and end up in some alternate dimension of the Wild West and some ghost town. I don't get that, out, but at least I understand who the Phantom was, what the motivation was. And now it has the best portrait gallery and hallway in any... Uh, Haunted Mansion anywhere. So yeah, I, I would love to see it again. But it was such a letdown the first time I saw it. Right. Yeah, we, we were talking when we were on the train to get there. We were talking. That girl that said that that to- confirmed what our suspicions were um, with that other kid. She was saying that recently. I don't know when. Maybe 2018, something like that. Disney bought out and reacquired Disneyland Paris. So I think they did a lot of renovation for a lot of stuff once because that it was happened. falling apart. So like we saw 
Yeah, yeah, they weren't maintaining it at all. It was it was pretty bad. And so, like, we didn't get to see the actual castle. I joke about, like, the castle, like, it was still rendering because, like, you have all the blocky scrims that show it, but it's not, like, the full detailed castle. So I, I crack myself up with that one. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you see, like, the, the Space Mountain got updated with Hyperspace Mountain. The Phantom Banner got updated, too. Like, you, there were some clear instances of, like, okay, Disney's trying to fix what... Paris or France was not doing well. I don't know who ran it, if France did or, or what. I know like Tokyo is the Oriental Land Company. Right, but. right, yeah. They probably had a similar setup in Paris, if I remember when it was your Disney. And so when they had the name change, and that, all that reopened, I think, around 2019. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, that, it is, it's a bummer that you didn't get to <laughs> get to see that, Dan. It's, uh, I mean, I would probably fly out there again just to ride Phantom Manor. Uh, yeah, I, let's go. I would go as well. Yes, I, I definitely want to see it because, I mean, when I saw the effects in the video, I was stunned by how amazing. I mean, when you I mean, you're watching portraits and, and, and one member of the portrait gallery just disappears, just disappears out of the picture. And then which got the pictures uh, that when they that the lightning flash, uh, they, they were so cool. Really, everything that they did was uh, well done. You also like when you walk into the foyer, like. Just at the entrance way before you get into one of your, I don't know if they do elevators or what, but one of the two rooms, the stretching rooms, that room looks really, really nice, like really, really well kept, put together and stuff. And as the ghost host is speaking, it starts to deteriorate more and more and more. And you start to see like the wallpaper like fading and ripping. And like now you get to see like the, the boards underneath and stuff. And that's also, I'm pretty sure like there was like a, a portrait uh th- that's probably where melanie and her father were and then it changes into phantom and her mm-hmm. which is how it all kicks off but i remember yeah you just stand in there and that's when you first hear the music and everything <sighs> super cool and what i saw when i did that is the exact same room none of the lightning effects are like that and then in that place of that portrait there was just a mirror and every once in a while in that mirror like a static image of mel of the, the bride's face i think it was melanie would just pop in and then fade out and pop in and fade out. It was just a wasn't anything spectacular at all. Yeah, no, this is <laughs> it's like he's did an entirely different ride than what I did. Seriously, yeah, that sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, so what else did we do, babe? Should we head over to Tomorrowland or they call it Discovery Land? So they don't, yeah, it's Discovery Land there, and that's where they have Space Mountain that wants to kill you. <laughs> Space Mountain is my favorite ride, and I could only ride this Space Mountain one time a day because it was just, it was so intense. It was like rock and roller coaster, like, on steroids. Oh, yeah. Okay. I I don't know what they did in this ride. (laughs) The effect is cool. It's it's a little weird now because it's Star Wars as opposed to regular Space Mountain. I think it would have been cooler if it was the classic, like, Space Mountain with the Jules Verne twist. Star Wars is a little awkward, like, as a permanent... Thing because it does not look like Star Wars at all. So I don't know why they did that. But anyways, yeah. So like the whole thing is it's supposed to be, originally was like the cannon to the moon. So that's why you have the, you actually climb up the outside of the mountain and then like it has a linear induction like launch coaster. You go up to the top and then you dip in. And then in on the inside, who knows what the heck happens there? You just get blended. Your heart's <laughs> racing and you feel like you're going to die for about three minutes and then you get off and you're like, holy <laughs> yeah every time we got off of that i was just like oh, i don't think i'm getting old right <laughs> like, i think that ride was just intense that is a very intense like yeah i i'm not a big space mountain fan never have been so i didn't really look into it or learn anything about it before going but yeah dude that coast is freaking for real i mean yeah. You get shot out of a cannon. You go upside down twice. You corkscrew. You go through a meteor. There's asteroids, planets, stars. And this isn't like Space Mountain and Disney World where it's like a roller coaster in the dark. Like the imagery is very vivid, very noticeable. You're seeing asteroids. You go through a meteor or something. I mean, it was just amazing. Now, I didn't get to experience the actual original Jules Verne version of it where you had the guy with the, the, the moon with the you know the, the, the moon the imagery of the moon getting hit in the eye with the spaceship yeah. and the, um and that whole thing I think I was on mission two or whatever it was and now they're all the way on hyperspace mountain doing the Star Wars thing but I mean the track's not changed it's right it's, yeah it's the same track exactly it's just an amazing role it, it's it really I mean it's it's space mountain with balls I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I love, it. Love, it. Love, it. love it yeah like it I'd say that's probably the most intense Disney coaster, more than rock and roller coaster. Oh, yeah. Anything that we have here, even like more than the 
the whatever Guardians ride, which is that's its own thing. But like, yeah, I, this this thing was just holy, holy crap. Yeah. Anyway, so that was that was like the big highlight of the west side of the park or east side of the park. We were really looking forward to doing that because again, that's a very unique thing over there. The whole area is unique, but uh, I feel like a lot of stuff over there was closed. Yes. There were a lot of those like Disney walls that you had to like navigate through like a big maze because they normally have like a 20,000 leagues under the sea like Nautilus exhibit that you can go down into the submarine and see some of the artifacts from the movie and the scenery and stuff. Like they would, I think they recreate the squid. I might be wrong with that, but yeah, they do it. I, I did this. It, it, it's, it's a little walkthrough attraction that they do. It, it's, Oh man, I don't know. Your expectations for it is a lot better than what you actually end up getting. It's it's like it's like a better version of the Swiss Family Treehouse, I guess, because there's not any stairs and the scenery is better. But what Steven's talking about is there's a portal, and who who knows? Maybe now that they're changing it, it'll be like Phantom Manor, and it'll be a whole new thing, and it'll be a lot better. But there's like a portal that opens to the side of the Nautilus, and then you see the uh, squid uh, attached to the Nautilus with the little beak opening and closing but it doesn't move that i had hoped you would see like the tentacles moving and stuff that's a little disappointing i don't remember seeing that i remember kind of being like okay the door just opens and there's a squid and it closes and then it opens and there's a squid and it closes and it was like that you got to see like captain nemo's bedroom you get to see like the organ and every once in a while in the middle of the organ like a light would shine on you'd see Kind of like the the um, uh, the bride that I described, where it's a mirror and then it light up, and then in the mirror is the face, and there would be the face of Captain Nemo, like just an animatronic face, and then it would just, yeah, just disappear out. It was, yeah, it, in your mind you can cock something really awesome. It wasn't that, so you didn't really miss anything. In fact, I'm going to bet when it reopens, it's going to be awesome. You're going to be like, oh, I can't wait to go back and check that out. Yeah, I'll have to go back again and hope I don't die on Space Mountain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so are, are we? Are you going in order still, or can, can I ask about some did, things? Did, we, did I skip over stuff? No, you're still on there. Okay. We can talk about the only other thing that was different. I mean, we went on Snow White and Pinocchio. Their fantasy land is relatively the same. But I mean, in French. But in French. <laughs> like, so we went on Pinocchio, Snow White. Their small world is funny. Because, I mean, we think about the caricatures of, like, the different nations. And obviously, he- here in America, we have a caricature of the French with their little hats and, you know, the Eiffel Tower and whatever. Their caricature of us is a taxi cab, football players, and Native Americans. Awesome. And the Golden Gate Bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge. That's the only, like, scenery that you get to see. <laughs> so, uh, it was just interesting being in a foreign country and being like, oh, that's the representation of America here in in France's small world. And then what they like the most about us is the Wild West. That's, I mean, I'm right. yeah. That's why Frontierland is so, like, in, intense. Yeah. And they love steak and fries. It was, <laughs> I, I mean, it's so much steak and fries. So we were sick of it. Like, they have a, they have like a, like a, almost like a pig, not pig, the Pecos Bills isn't the right word, but it was like a Wild West, like, steak restaurant. Like, like a cattleman kind of restaurant thing in downtown Disney that we had a reservation at that I ended up, canceling and we switched it because by that point we were so done with steak and french fries we were like i'm not eating this ever yeah that's yeah, awesome so- <laughs> pommes frites <laughs> yeah, there you go. steak com- yeah, I remember we got on Snow White and we didn't even know what it was. Like you couldn't even like what what is this? What are we getting on? And it, oh, it's Snow White. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I took a picture of like the entryway because it doesn't say Snow White. What, let me see it's if like, I can find the. It's like La Blanche. The yeah. yeah. Now was Alice's Curious Labyrinth? Was that in Fantasyland as well? Yes. yes, and that was really cute. Um, it's kind of like. Swiss Family Treehouse, right? Like you're just walking through, and they have like maze, yeah. yeah, a little maze, and you walk through like the house, and you walk through like where they're painting the roses red. Yeah, and every once in a while, there's some areas where the queen can jump up from over the hedges and yell at you, and and uh, eventually you can get to like I think it's her castle, and yeah. then you can go all the way up to the top and see some stuff. I mean, it's not that high up, so it's no. not like yeah, you kind of get a view. overview of the maze and and then look out into the distance. It's, it's cool. It's it, I love the idea because my wife's a big Alice fan, but yeah, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more interactive elements and and moving animatronics. It's very static. It's very you know, it's like it's like going to a what's the name of the Oh god like dang! Any kind of hedge maze? No, like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm blanking on the name in City Park. Uh, what's it oh, called? Storyland. Oh, Storyland. Storyland. Okay. Storyland. Yeah. A lot like going to Storyland, where they just don't move and they're like, like that. And you're like, oh, okay. You know, <laughs> Cute. I'll, 
mention that like that was an observation I had. There were a lot of areas that seemed like the kind of place where you could just go to explore and you don't have to ride a ride. You had that like by Phantom Manor, there was a little if you kept walking past the mansion, there was a like a graveyard that you can go see different characters' graves and stuff. Oh yeah, Boot Hill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. Um in Adventureland there's actually a pretty extensive one that was of course mostly closed. Uh, but like <clears throat> you can climb around. It was kind of Swiss family treehouse, kind of a lot more than that. Um, you can explore a pirate ship. It might have been Captain Hooks. You can go into Skull Rock, like up into it and look out of the eyes and stuff. Like so, I really appreciated that they had some areas where you didn't have to get into a line. You can just go explore and find some stuff and sort of like tell your own story. And, as it were like that's kind of how the idea was originally right not just in line so it was that was definitely welcome now you say that yeah it makes you think because i, I want to say that they probably lead I, I bet you out of every disney theme park they lead uh in walk through attractions because between the curious labyrinth uh, there's an aladdin walk through that you do there's the Nautilus, there's Swiss Family Treehouse, there's Skull Rock. I mean, there's a lot of walkthrough attractions over there. Right, and it looks like they've done a lot of work to make them look nice, too. There's, there's reasons to go. It's not just like, a, well, I guess I'll do this. Like, oh, no, I kind of want to go look at that. That looks pretty cool to see. So yeah. <clears throat> that was neat. Um, and then Adventureland, should we talk about Indiana Jones? This was my least favorite ride. I got a shirt for it. I love this ride. I hate this ride. Did you so ride the much. Indiana Jones ride, Danny? Uh, no. Okay. So I went there in Indiana Jones. I made a beeline for it, and it was closed for renovation. I've seen it online. That's about as much as I could do. I have thoughts from that, but I'm, I'm kind of here. I, I'd rather hear from people who've done it. All right. Here so. we go. Let me give you a little bit of backstory, real quick. Just our trip in Paris. I was having some back pain a little bit. I think at this point it was because I was carrying a backpack and I was walking all day every day. And so I was just. saw that steak you're eating. Right. (laughs) That too. (laughs) That too. Yeah. Right. But like, you know, I'm just like, I'm getting kind of uncomfortable and holding the backpack. I'm just like, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, there was one time, like, we didn't go to the park for a thing. We just, we went back to the hotel room and like did some yoga. Like, I stretched my back out. I'm like, okay, this kind of feels better. We're too young for this to be happening. So So we saw the ride. And I'm like, okay, I have to ride this. I know I have to ride this because we're here. And if I don't ride this, I'm going to regret it. But at the same time, it's very small, uh, like, coaster cars, like trains. And uh, it looks a lot like a wild mouse coaster. And I'm like, that's going to mess me up, man. That is not going to be good for me. But I'm like, you know, whatever. We're going to do this, and it's going to be fine. So it's called Indiana Jones and the Temple du Peril. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril, which is just a roller coaster that they built. And then they built also some, like, Mayan ruins or something in in it. So it, the roller coaster could totally exist without the, the Mayan ruins. They, they, there's no story in this. It's just you wouldn't even know it's Indiana Jones if they didn't slap the name on it. <clears throat> and it's also hidden. Like there's a lot of trees in Forest really Street, like you can see in, in the concept art that they're sharing. So yeah, there's like a I think there's like a pizza restaurant, and then you just like keep walking down this like dead end path, and then you get to yeah. this. And it's a teeny tiny tiny footprint like you think you want a roller coaster you're gonna have a pretty big footprint there's so much space in adventure land that's not used up and this thing occupies such a small footprint they have so much coaster stacked on top of itself right here i don't know why they didn't spread it out more but it works i think i love this ride we nicknamed it the chiropractor ride yeah (laughs) his back was fine i was cured man i was absolutely cured we went back to that ride every time my back hurt Wow. wow. I don't know why. I don't know what made it better, but I love that ride. So <laughs> the first time we rode it, so this is this is closing out the first part of our day, day one. Uh, we're kind of jumping around, so this isn't going to like take forever, forever. But we went on that ride, and as soon as we're like front in line, it starts to like drizzle a little bit. It's just a little bit of rain, and I'm like, oh, boy. Okay. Uh, so then we get on the ride, and we're in the front. And if you've ever been on, like, uh, Expedition Everest, you know how the front there, when you're riding in front, there's nothing in front of you. Like, there's the wall, and then the track is in front of you. And it's the same for this, except you have over the head, because just like Space Mountain, this thing goes in a circle. Unlike Space Mountain, you can see the circle, and the circle is about that big. (laughs) It's the smallest inversion I've ever seen. And when you go through it, it's like, like, it's so fast, like... I always like tell people that I haven't gone on a roller coaster that goes upside down. I'm like, you have nothing to be afraid of. 
all it feels like is you're going uphill a lot until you're out of it. And and this one, you're like doing a steep uphill, man. Like this is crazy. I couldn't believe it. But as we get, we get in it and we're going on, we go up on the lift hill and it's raining a lot more and we're getting soaked. And I'm like, oh boy, okay. <laughs> so we're getting pelted with rain while we're on this roller coaster. And we get back to the hotel because we were like, okay, it's pouring down rain. Like we're going to go back to the hotel, chill, dry off. And then we're going to go to the Disney, the Walt Disney Studios, Walt Disney Studios <laughs> Park for dinner at the Chez Remy restaurant. So we get back to the hotel and we are soaked. And, and we stink. <laughs> and we, <laughs> yes, it's worse than it's gross. And this is when we learn that to wash a single shirt, single shirt, one shirt one. was like 8.6 euros, which I think <laughs> translated to roughly like $15 to wash a single shirt. So needless to say, we bought lots of t-shirts at the parks yeah. to extend our wardrobe. Yeah, we ran out of like clean clothes because every time we went back to the hotel, we changed because it just you we didn't bring enough clothes. We should have thought better, but yeah. But of course, those clothes were all damp and made our hotel room just <laughs> re- <laughs> it was like all milk we came back the next time. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so is that one of the shirts that you bought that you're wearing right now? Well, yeah, yeah, this is. Uh, I, I made it a, a, a point to try and buy a shirt for all the rides, but the most of their stuff they didn't have shirts for. They didn't have a lot. Like this was the only merchandise I could find for Phantom Manor at oh, all. Oh wow, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Right, they don't have a lot of that kind of stuff, which is bizarre to me. Because like they would have made probably a hundred and fifty bucks off of me for a hoodie and a t-shirt and like a keychain and a sticker and a whatever. You know, I, I got to have it all. The Phantom Manor is like my favorite thing. So. Oh, dude, I, like they had shirts like a plenty when I was there for uh, Phantom Manor. That's kind of crazy. Oh, really? Yeah, there was an old West. Uh, it's good now, and everyone keeps buying them. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know what I wanted to ask you about Indiana Jones. So this is what I don't get about the Indiana Jones ride is that there seems to be a distinctive lack of Indiana Jones, the Indiana Jones ride. So can you explain like, what is the, is there a story behind it? Is there a tie in Indiana Jones? Because I don't see it. Not at all. The the queue, you walk through some camps as a side note, I will just say, I loved this. They had an original Willie's Jeep there. I took so many pictures of it. Cause it's like a box. Like it has like the stamped, like on the hood and actual Willie's. And I suspect there's a chance. I don't know. Maybe it was there left over from World War II that they just yeah. like, put it over here. Why not? But that made my, well, a lot of that day made my day. But like, that was really cool because, like, I mean, I, my grandpa's got an old Willie's. I have a Jeep Wrangler now that I drive around all the time. So I'm like, oh, that is awesome. I just, I would love to have that. But yeah, the it. queue is just like you're walking through like just a camp. Camps. There's nothing. No Indiana Jones, not an animatronic. No. Not, a, not, not even like, oh, there's his hat. Like, Nothing. I mean, Nothing is, is the music even playing? Don't remember. Don't there remember. probably was music. I can't remember if there was Indiana Jones music. If there was, it probably was Indiana Jones music. Yeah. But, but they probably could do a lot of work to make that actually look like an Indiana Jones ride. Or they just removed the name and no one, it's the same thing. It's now an adventure outpost with a roller coaster. Of cruise exactly. Yeah. National treasure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks like, you know what it looks like when you're walking through the animal kingdom, like, and you see like this, uh, that little, uh, temple area over there. You, they could have just, yeah, it's just like that. It's, it's like, you just, you know, roller generic. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very, very generic. All right. So let's talk about pirates though. I, I do want to talk I about, that. Hear about pirates. Yeah, because yeah, pirates. I'm curious. To me, this one, it, it puts Disney World's Pirates of the Caribbean to shame, and it kind of gives the original run for its money. So I'm kind of curious to hear what y'all thoughts were on this. I mean, to me, it just, it made the most, like Stephen was saying, like the most chronological sense. Like you get on, you're you're going through like the um, the fort, right? Like the, and it's being attacked. And then from there, that's when you do like the dead men scene and all of, and all of that. Right. It's, it's not really like how it is normally where it's like the inverse. It's two layers, which they all are, right? Because you always have to draw. This one, there are par- parts of it, like she says, you're riding through the fort at first, right? Like that fort there, you're riding on the top layer of that. And there's points where you can actually see down into like where you have the the pirate ship with sometimes it's Barbosa. I think now it's Barbosa and now on all of them, except for this one. Um, you can see that that pirate ship bombarding the town like from above, which is really cool. And then like also there you have like a pirate swinging back and forth across like where you're about to 
to go and right like, over oh. your head there's a pirate like, really? yeah, yeah yeah i was like dang look at that okay. animatronic like, pirate yeah that's cool and then as uh, i think you go th- like there's an explosion and that's what causes you to dive down to the ocean level and now you are traveling through i, I can't remember if you pass by the pirate ship and then go into the town or whatever but like you start in the fort then you see the pirate ship and the town you do all of that and then you see the the crypt and all or, like, all of the caves and, and stuff mm-hmm. and I, don't know, I think that it's it's so well done. They take the same elements and then they piece them in such a, a logical order to make it um, just make a lot of sense. So I love that we wrote it a few times because I'm, I just I couldn't get enough of it. Yeah, a lot of the things that I was reading, like uh, while I was reading the Phantom Manor book before, I don't know you had mentioned that like one of the Imagineers was upset because it it looks dilapidated on the outside. The reason that they have to do this and why they probably did the chronological order in Pirates of the Caribbean is because it's Europe. And so there's so many different languages that are spoken. And so they really have to rely a lot on the visual storytelling as opposed to what you're hearing audio wise. Oh, that makes a ton of sense. And then there, uh, there's two pirates that are sword fighting, which the animatronics on that are just unbelievable. And you actually see it. It's not like the the shadows that you see in the in our versions of the ride. Yeah, so that was that was cool. Also, like uh, in similar to Disneyland, like you pass by a restaurant, like you float behind, you, know you float by the Blue Bayou on the way into it, and, and you don't do that in Disney World. Well, here there's a restaurant you float by. When Anna and I ate over there, it was it was the Blue Lagoon. They've they've since changed the name to like Captain Jack's. It is, yeah, yeah. We ate there. That was our dinner on day three. That yes. must have been our third day. So yeah, first day dinner was the Shea Remy. Where we had steak and fries. Second day dinner was at Jack's restaurant. That was at Jack's. Okay, third day dinner was at the Indian place, the Aladdin's lunch at Agrabah. 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 Right. Okay. We can talk about Captain Jack's. It was cool. I mean, Danny, you ate there, I'm sure. I don't think it's any different. Like, it didn't have, like, Captain, you know, like, Jack Sparrow. The one thing I will say is I feel like the cast members there, and then, Danny, I don't know if you had this experience, are not as, like, accommodating, I guess you could say. So, <laughs> again, remember, the restaurant, like, we it's had restaurants. It's the restaurants. It's the restaurants. Yeah, yeah, let's just call it that. Like, American. we're young Americans. <laughs> Our, our reservation was at like 345 because, again, all the restaurants closed at 4. The park closed at 6 o'clock. So we got there really early. And we were like, hey, like we want to sit by the water, right? Because, you know, that's what you do at Blue Bayou, right? You sit by the water and you get to wave at people. Yeah, you want wave patrol. Yeah. The cast members were like, no. Like, they were just not about that. We, no, we, I didn't care. We they, got early and we're like, can we sit there? Like, eh, eh. Okay. And they walked us over. And, like, there were open tables. People got sat at the open table next to the water after us. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah. what's so hard about this? Yeah. <laughs> we sat by the water when we ate there. I wish I could remember what, what we ate, but it was so long ago. But I do know what you're talking about. Yes, the minute they spoke to you in French and you answered them in English is the minute their eyes started to roll. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> so I do remember that. Um, and the food there was, was I don't remember. It, like, uh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't hate it. I think I, think I tried seafood for yeah, my appetizer. I don't eat seafood, so. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I know. I, I know. I'm, it's, I'm it's trying, weird guys. Being I'm trying. By ocean you're a, I'm about to say you're in a good seafood state. <laughs> and fries and fries <laughs> seafood, seafood fries. And fries yeah the, the food there was uh, it was fine yeah it was it was good the, i like the ambiance though it's uh it was cool because just it, in a lot of ways it seems like they took a lot of the concepts that you had originally at disneyland and they just plussed it a little bit so mm-hmm. like like we said with the phantom manor space mountain you have the reordering of pirates of the caribbean this is like the blue bayou but it's just it's it, you have different elevations right some people were eating like up and further back and you have like all the palm trees a lot closer up it's not stylized to uh the, the bayou it's stylized to like a tropical area like mm-hmm. um you know let's so you have all the all the palms and stuff like just really close by and and it's not like a big open space either you have planter boxes with with trees and stuff in the way so you're more was, like intimate as opposed yeah. to just like i'm eating in a disney like restaurant right like right. like it kind of feels it blew by you shove as many tables as you can to serve as many people as you can to make money so well it's just kind of weird because in france every place we ate you were sat next to somebody like you were literally elbow to elbow whatever cafe we went to 
So that's kind of uh, interesting. You know what I wanted to ask you is you talked before about the uh, the castle being under renovation, the scrims. So did no, no, don't bring up the dragon. I'm sorry. Are you gonna bring up the dragon? Yes, that's exactly what I was gonna bring up. The dragon. Oh, we were so disappointed. Yeah, the dragon was closed. Like, oh. The whole castle was closed. Like we definitely are gonna go back uh, when our when our daughter is born. Because yeah, we're like we have to go see the the whole thing now renovated. Oh, and congratulations. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What fuck Disney? <laughs> Way to make a baby. Slid that right in there. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I, I want to say that the dragon was probably like, if you look at my phone and everything I took pictures of, there's like 30 pictures of the dragons and like maybe of the dragon and maybe one or two of everything else. Right. I mean, that's another example of Alice's thing, the Skull Rock, the, the pirate ship, like just something to go see that's not on a ride. That's, you don't have to wait in line. You just go and it's there and you can stay as long as you want. And it, I, I wish that they did that more because that is such a unique thing over there. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, least, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. In that part, they don't have that in Walt Disney Studios. I took a picture of that and sent it to my sister and said, what are you doing here in Paris? <laughs> 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 I paid extra to send that text too because that was a lot. <laughs> that was an international text. Okay, so y'all been talking about is unless there's something else I want to talk about in the uh, in Disneyland Paris, but y'all kind of been hinting towards the the studios. I was wondering if y'all wanted to transition there or yeah, we can we can definitely go there. That one talk about that for about five minutes. Yeah, that hey. one was. Um, bit disappointing as we've mentioned it's very small it sounds like they are adding a lot of stuff to it um they have crushes coaster which was really cool that was a fantastic coaster and that's like the only reason to go there right now their tower of terror is the same as the original disney's like disneyland tower of terror where you don't go forward or anything it's just a up down and then you get off crushes coaster is like a lot in a lot of ways, actually, like um, the new Guardians of the Galaxy ride, but the spinning is not controlled. It's just it free spins based on your momentum as you're going around, and so you might one time be up, looking upwards as you go over a bank, and the other time you'll be looking down or whatever. So it the spinning was independent, and it was it was pretty cool. You also have instead of four seats facing forward, you have two feet two seats uh, facing forward and two facing backward. Mm-hmm. So no matter how many times you ride it, it's just going to be different based on you know who's on there because that's going to change the weight distribution and which position you ride on to. It was it was cool. I was pretty worried about going on that and like just. Barfing, but no, <laughs> there, there was no risk of that at all. Like, no, it's a pretty smooth coaster. The theming is really cute. Like it's like a um, like don't a ex- pier theme. Right. But, yeah. Don't expect it to be like to the nines, like beautiful. Like you have no. It doesn't look like you're on a roller coaster. You're definitely on a roller coaster, and you can see the track, and you, you can see the skeleton. It's it's inside most of it, but you can still see all that. It's just like very blue, and you have like I think lights and stuff that sort of put aquatic things like fish and stuff flying around so there was one other ride that real quick the remy ride i think you all have done it now and yeah, that probably, yeah. Uh, you all agree it's fine it's not like i don't know why they made such a big deal out of it over here <laughs> no i'm with you <laughs> when, it, new, uh, when yeah. it opened i'm like i, I, it's I did the same it. I, i've done it already right. like it, i don't know it, it's not it's not the it's not that interesting well, i think that's though is since they didn't have one stateside it was it was pretty exciting to bring that it here true. But yeah. once you've done it, it's like, oh, okay, I got it. It's cool. Right. Um, I mean, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Well is like 10 times better. 100%. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, um, you know, it's the same general concept, but it's so much more to see and it's so much more. Uh, you're able to redo it. Uh, yeah. And enjoy and it more. Glasses too. So we um, did that. Um, and then there's that Cars ride, which is like a backlot thing, which. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like they took the, the, the Hollywood backlot tour that you used to do back at MGM Studios and they just rethemed it to cars. Yes. Really? Okay. Yeah. So like you know that big tanker truck that comes at you? Yeah. 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 Yes, it's now a car tanker truck. Oh, I see what you yeah, the Dunnick. Yeah, I live streamed it or at least I tried to. I don't know how well those actually came out, but Yeah, the videos in the uh YouTube channel, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we hopped on that and I was whatever, we paid to be here. <laughs> so I'm gonna ride this thing and it might not be good. And we ride it and I'm like, Yeah, okay, this is not that great. And then we get to the thing and I'm like, This looks like Catastrophe Canyon. And then it's a hundred percent Catastrophe Canyon but with cars characters in it. I'm like, That's cool that they recreated that. I'm sure that there's a lot of people stateside that would 
appreciate that coming back. But uh, yeah, I mean, so that was neat because I'd never ridden Catastrophe Canyon before, or whatever, the, the back lot thing. I never experienced Catastrophe Canyon. I've only ever seen Video. pictures and videos and people talking about it. That was cool. And then like when the water comes up from like over top of us, I'm like, I, I jump I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. That's coming from up here too. Okay, I didn't know it was going to be that like immersive or whatever. But no, this is cool. I mean, it was cute. It was you go through and you see a few different landmarks made up in like the cars style. I think they had the Eiffel Tower or something. Yeah, the Eiffel Tower of tires or something. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, Luigi. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, was that about it over there? Like again, like the it's, RC ride. That's the only thing I'll talk about because I this was like the most disappointing thing for me. It's like you know the RC car in in toys. Toy Story. Toy Story. Yes. Toy Story. Yeah, the remote control car. Yeah. It's basically like a U. I don't even. I think it's like a. It's like a cheap Six Flags. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, then they stuck like they three D printed like elements that made it look like the RC car, and then they just made that go back and forth. The line was like <laughs> seventy five minutes, and we should not. It, like we again, we paid to be there, so I wanted to ride the ride. But it was all, like we were just like, why did I just spend right. my time doing this? <laughs> Right. Yeah. 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 We're like, we're just standing there, and I'm playing Pokemon Go on the line. I'm just like, what? Do we really want to do this? <laughs> what the heck? And then we get on it, and it goes back and forth, and they make us like put a lot of our stuff in a locker, like <laughs> we didn't bring our backpack on and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. So we put it all that way, and I'm like, this is like over the top, guys. Like, I don't know why you made this, such a big deal out of this. I don't know why so many people were in line for it either. Like, yeah, it was. I know I was there. I recognize that I was literally part of the problem, but I don't know why there was. Like I would have ridden on it if it was five minutes or whatever, right? So like, what what was so attractive about that ride? I could not tell you. For listeners out there, picture as if Andy put together a track for the RC racer car and got bored after forty five seconds. <laughs> yeah, a big new shape, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, we used to have a ride like that at Six Flags, and in, um, was it the Houston one? Yeah, it wasn't Houston, but on ours, you at least went upside down. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. No, you don't do that. This is the one time you don't go upside down at Disneyland yeah. Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else sends you upside down, but not this, of course. Generally, what rides like that work up to is you go back, forth, back, forth, and whoop, all the way around. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, we have one of those in Storyland, I, I think. I uh, could be wrong. Like those, uh, um, like a seesaw or like that... Uh like that boat yeah 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 yeah, yeah exactly yeah. like oh, that boat yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Viking ship thing yeah, yeah. Viking ship there you go yeah. Yeah. same idea except it's on the track instead of like a pendulum it's but it does the same motion so yeah. right so anything else anything else stand out from your trip anything else you want to convey um the Agrabah restaurant I will say that was one of the real cool things is they had a lot of variety so again I told you we switched the reservation because we didn't want to have steak and fries anymore so we <laughs> ate at the Aladdin it's like the Aladdin's Agrabah restaurant and it was good like it was like Indian food they highlight a lot of characters over there like Aladdin like Lion King like Stitch so Stitch is huge over there Stitch is huge I don't know why but he is he's- <laughs> that, like there wasn't a lot of Mickey and Minnie, right? Like you, Mickey and Minnie is a big thing here in the states. There was Which, nothing. That was nice. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> I like the Agra, but I remember going through there and being impressed because it kind of, it's not like just you eat in a room, like a counter service restaurant. It's like you really are going through like what feels like an outdoor marketplace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it feels like you're walking through um, uh, Morocco. Morocco at yeah, Epcot and there's just exactly tables. It. Yeah, it was that's really cool. cool. It's like it says Agra, but I feel like there, it wasn't like Aladdin themed, right? Like it was like Morocco themed. Yes, yeah. Like you didn't see Genie everywhere or. Apu or whatever Abu the monkey is what I mean. <laughs> <Poo-poo. Yeah. laughs> Not the convenience store owner, um, but <laughs> oh, that's very problematic. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> anyway, that, that's it. Was just kind of cool uh, that that it was. Not it didn't have to be about a character, which was nice. And let's see. So yeah, the last day I'm just scrolling through my photos trying to see if I missed anything. So yeah, j- just to. Uh, First day was mostly Disneyland Paris, then a little bit of Disney Walt Disney Studios. Next day was, I think we did a little bit of Walt Disney Studios, and then just Disneyland Paris, and then the last day was just Disneyland Paris. I'll say to anyone listening now, if you're going to go, probably two days is okay, but when they just re- they opened all their Marvel stuff. Now they rethemed Rock and Roller Coaster to Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So it's the same right. ride, but it's now Iron Man, which... Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know what that's actually going to be like, but I wager most people are going to spend 
uh, their time in Disneyland Paris and maybe half a day at this point, maybe three fourths of a day at Walt Disney Studios. I'm looking, let's see, they, our last day, they started putting up Halloween decorations and that's about it. Oh yeah. We'll close this out with this. My last slight disappointment of the trip. <laughs> so they have a big steamboat like we have here. Um, oh, the Molly Brown. They have the Molly Brown there. It's a different style of steamboat because it's it's a Western themed area. It's all just in the Western area. So. Oh, is that named after Unsinkable Molly Brown? Uh, you know, Kathy Bates Titanic. That kind of thing. Oh, I, I didn't know that. I don't know. I it, okay. If that's Okay. Possible. I, I, don't I don't know, know where they got the name for that. I don't one, know but, either. Uh, it's so okay. We went on that. We've ri- we wrote it a few times. It's really cool because you get a lot of really good views of Thunder Mountain, and then they have some static figures. They don't really have animatronics around. But they have static figures around the river, so you can see m- mooses and peep meese. Mooses. Mooses. Um, and, and like, uh, there's like a, a guy with his little shack that's like right on the water and stuff. Instead of having the wheel on the back, I think it has two smaller wheels that kind of are tucked on the inside at the middle. Uh, so that's that's just the different style of that boat. The last ride besides that we did, we wanted to do Phantom Manor, but I think we had done it already two or three times in a row. So we're like, okay, all right, we've done it enough. Let's go over to Thunder Mountain. We did Thunder Mountain once, and we like we booked it over there because we weren't sure we were going to make it in time. So we get over there, we get on the ride, and then we get off. We're like, we actually have some time. We can get on the Molly Brown and just do like a nice, calm cruise around the the island before we have to get out of here. Little did I know that had we not booked it to Thunder Mountain, I could have gotten walked off of Thunder Mountain, a ride which you have to go through a tunnel to get up onto the island to ride the roller coaster. Because we get on the Molly Brown, and I see like the, the backup lights turn on all over the mountain. I'm like, no freaking way. No you got, we saw like a train stopped at the lift hill. I'm like, that's weird. That's weird. I wonder if they're going to get walked up. And then they did. And like all those lights came on. I'm like, oh, oh, oh that was so cool. I've never been walked off of a ride. And it's, it's a weird thing to want to happen. But like, I feel like I've gone to Disney enough where I'm like, okay, I want to see when things break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> so I just sat there and I filmed the whole thing kind of like, ah. Oh. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, that was the closeout for our trip. So it was a really cool trip. Definitely something uh, absolutely happy with what we did. But I know there's more stuff to go see now. I think there's always going to be more things. So you just got to go when you can. Yeah. Anyone that's interested in going, don't be afraid of the cost. Because I think just to fly there and do the Disneyland Paris stuff would have cost us about the same. We were trying to plan a Disneyland trip and staying at Disneyland Hotel this past April. The cost was like the same. I could not fathom the idea of paying that much to go to California of all places and go to some place that I've been to a million times. So we'd ended up not doing that. But because I'm like, we, we could spend this money and go to France again. Like that's insane. So like, it's totally worth the the time and the effort to go out if you can at least once there's plenty to do there and plus you get to see paris too right like don't be the weirdo that just goes to disneyland paris yeah uh, <laughs> i'll be the weirdo <laughs> yeah we'd be weird well I'll you know be- what can, can i ask you that question so uh, that'll be my the, we, let's close it out with this how would you rank the parks for your entertainment dollar in terms of disneyland disney world disneyland paris you've been all three now what would you rank in terms of your entertainment dollar what would you spend the money on Oh, gosh. It's not because I live here, but I probably would put Walt Disney World at, at the bottom. Really? Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, I would See, do. Yeah. If it's if we're just talking the parks, I harp on Walt Disney World so much for their insane misuse of space. <laughs> that I can't justify saying I'm going to spend, if I, if I have $5,000 to spend, that's going to get me at Walt Disney World, Disneyland, or DLP. I can't say that I want to go to Walt Disney World, even if I'm living on the West Coast. Really? I would probably rather do Disneyland for the historical like significance of it, the 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 old school rides that originated there. I really like that. But we'll rank them. What was the ranking? If we're just talking the Magic Kingdom style parks, like with the castle, Disneyland Paris is number one. Disneyland is a close second. That's a hard. It's hard to, to, to determine because Disneyland has such significance, but like I, I never really cared that much for Magic Kingdom, so that was wow. Well, wait, well, well, I, I, that blows my mind. You won't even give Disney World the castle, <laughs> like over Disney. Uh, you won't give Disney World the castle over Disneyland, and you didn't even see 
the castle behind the scrim. Yeah, you saw a rendering castle. Like, oh, no, man. Okay, so Good it's enough. like this. Good enough. <laughs> I don't care that much that the castle's massive. <laughs> Walt only walked through one of the castles. Ah. So uh, I'll take the small castle if it means I also get to go on Indiana Jones, like our version of it, and the original Haunted Mansion, and the better Space Mountain. You know, like there's a lot of really cool things over at that park that I, like the castle's never really been a huge thing for me. I, I'm just identifying the castle parks so we're differentiating from Epcot versus Animal Kingdom or whatever. If we're just okay. talking Disneyland, Magic Kingdom, or Disneyland Paris, that's what I mean when I say castle park. I gotcha. But, oh yeah, and then even with the scrims up, like I, I could tell that the castle of Disneyland Paris is the best because it's just it's <laughs> as big as the Walt Disney World one, which everyone likes, but it's also more detailed and more uh, more elaborate. I feel like it's a little bit fancier or something. I don't know how to describe it, but they, they, they just did something different with it that is very it's not unique. like the mountainside. Like it yeah. looks like integrated. It's not like just stuck on flat land. It's yeah, you're right. That's probably part of it. That there's like a hill that's kind of built off of, and it's you know, nailed like, it. Yeah, plus you have a dragon underneath, and and that little double little window thing that they have in that top turret. That there's something so cool about that as well. The pink shade. Yeah, no, it, it really, it really is the. Cadillac of castles, I would say. Right. Really? Yeah. I mean, better than the yeah. Shanghai one. I know they want to sell that one as like a big deal, but it's kind of too big to be. It just seems overdone. It, it's <laughs> missing. <laughs> it's much. like the whole point of this castle was to make the biggest castle ever, not to give it any charm or personality exactly. or anything yeah. like that. Biggest, so. bigger, better. Yeah. Boop, boop, cool. The engineers thought so much of whether or not they could. They didn't think whether or not they, they should. should. Yeah. Well, guys, thank y'all so much for coming on and sharing all this. I really appreciate that. I mean, yeah. I, having us on. Yeah, I can't talk to these guys about pa- Disneyland Paris. No, I know <laughs> no. nothing about it. They just look at me and like, yeah, screw you. We didn't get to go. Yeah. I say, I like French fries. Oh, yeah. Good for you. You get to go. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, like it's just when you eat them every single day that they just eat <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and please give give uh, Rachel a shout out because, I mean, I'm sure she's listening and, you know, let her know about how good of a job. <laughs> oh, look, he put yeah. it. <laughs> Rachel's awesome. We love yeah. Rachel. Fellow uh, weekend. There you go. Give give her a shout out if you don't mind, please. Yeah, sure. Just, yeah, yeah she sure. was she was awesome. She definitely helped a lot because, uh, as we mentioned, this trip was originally booked for September of 2022 for our, or 2020 for our anniversary or April 2020. This trip got pushed back a bunch a because bunch of COVID. Because I, I don't know how many times, at least like three. So the flexibility there was huge. And she made all of the calls like to with France. the time difference and everything. <laughs> like she, she coordinated everything and learned how all this stuff worked. Like I, there was so much there. I'm like, T- holy moly. Did you like get a, like a, a spiel? Like when you started doing planning? No, I just learned this, like to do this trip. Like, wow. She went above and beyond with that, which was Really yeah. appreciate it because we would have been even more lost than we already were when we got there. Yeah, definitely use a travel agent if you're going to go to Disneyland or any of the international parks just because it just takes the, the headache off of you. Mm-hmm. We, we say that all the time over here. If you're going to use a travel agent, book with Lee. But if Lee is uh, on the toilet or indisposed or whatever, <laughs> Rachel, <laughs> I used Rachel last time I went to Disney World. Uh, so, yes, she yeah, is well, we had really scene. great, really nice, really polite, and really knows her stuff. Yep, she definitely takes the time out to, to make it make it happen for y'all. Absolutely. Make it magical. All right, guys. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us on. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we had a great time, man. Yeah, so guys, if uh, you're curious to know more about Disneyland Paris, man, feel free to reach out to us and get in touch with us. Or if you have any comments, um, we'll tell you how to do that in just a little bit. Guys, we hope you enjoyed that discussion about Disneyland Paris and the Downs' experiences over there. Look, if you want to learn more about us, magicourway.com is the way to go. There you'll find our social media links, past episodes, and more. Also, if you want to get in touch with us to share your opinions about Disneyland Paris or your experiences, you can do so through the following ways. Shoot us an email at show at magicourway.com or call or send us a text message at 1815 Moeekin. That is 1815 Moeekin. 669-4226. And of course, we have a couple of guys that do things outside of the podcast. First of all, we got Eli does things with comics. Hey, Rob Liefeld here. Deadpool, Cable, X-Force, Domino, Marvel Comics, Image Comics, all of it. You guys, what is up? Eli Ivory. What a great name. Eli Ivory, comic guru. 
I'm here to talk about you. I am here to say, check out ivorycomics.com. That's right, you. Check out ivorycomics.com. I-V-O-R-Y-C-O-M-I-C-S.com. If you're not doing that, you're missing out. You're missing out. Uh, the Savages comic cannot be beat, cannot be surpassed. You need to check it out. Experience it for yourself. And you know the story. It's all about the glory. Congrats to you and all the magic that you're making with your Ivory Comics. Eli Ivory, comic book guru. Check out IvoryComics.com. Comic book guru. Eli Ivory. The whole package. Deadpool said to. Do it. IvoryComics.com. Right now. Life filled out. Thank you for that one, Rob. I always love that PSA for the USA. And just like he said, you can always go to the Ivory Comics website and see all the projects that I'm working on and blog posts and interviews and, of course, a link to this podcast so you never miss a beat, you never miss an episode, you never miss a trip report. Facebook.com, you can find me there, Elijah Ivory. As long as you're a real person, nice to meet you. But if you're bot, I don't want to greet you. Get on out of here now. I don't know you. Skedaddle. Get out of here. Project Geisha has a Facebook page. You go to Facebook.com slash Project Geisha. Instagram, I'm right there, of course, posting the parts and likes. You can find me there at EIV504. And, of course, on Twitter, I can be found at Hancock10166. So if you appreciate the madness, then you're just bringing me the gladness. Thank you very much. And we all appreciate you playing Hurt today, by the way. Yeah, that's yes. all good. Yeah, yeah. I noticed you have not run off to the bathroom once. Mm. I am very proud of you. You stuck in there. You performed like a champ. Good job. I was here for y'all. Yeah. I, he was, I clen- y'all he was clenched story. up, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, I, I'm sweating bad, but I you know, <laughs> show on camera. You're doing good. Yeah. You're doing good. Thank you. And tune in next week when you hear all about Eli and I's uh, vacation to racing Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very man. exciting stuff. <laughs> Yeah, look, and if you want to book a vacation to Racine, or for some reason Rachel's also on the toilet and can't book you at the moment, <laughs> you can do it through Lee. Lee, tell him how to book with you, sir. All right, just give me a call at 832-431-1621. That's 832-SPACE-MURDER-MOUNTAIN, 832-D-I-E-D-I-E. Oh, bird. You can uh, email me at Lee at MagicRway.com. On Facebook, you can find me at Facebook.com slash Lost If You Could Travel. That's L-A-S-T-O-V-I-C-A Travel. Uh, Instagram, you got a friend in Lee Travel. TikTok, you got a friend in Lee. And if you do any of that, we'll get you hooked up and booked up with no. Hasovika. And as always, want to thank our special guests, the Downses, Stephen and Sarah. Thank you for coming on and relaying your story to all of us. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. yeah. Of course. It's a pleasure. Yeah. In addition, guys, look, there's so many ways to support the show as a whole, and you can find them all on our website, magicourway.com. Plus, if you want to elevate your support of the Magic Our Way podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash Magic Our Way. There you'll find six awesome tiers to support this show. Any way in which you can support the show is deeply appreciated. We also want to thank you for being a loyal listener, and we always love hearing from our listeners. All opinions are always welcome on the Magic Ari podcast, so make sure you get in touch with us today. Some awakens. We say Quaharini. My name is Kevin. And I'm Danny. Magic out. I have every intention of eating those bananas for breakfast, but I still somehow end up with tacos. Ketchup wings. <laughs> Steak and fries. <laughs> <laughs>